Now we come to uh, the next lesson on, in this uh, physics use case where we uh, use the opportunity to discuss the binomial distribution, which is a very important uh, concept in the theory of random or the practice of random numbers. Because many things have the binomial distribution. So to get the binomial distribution, we need to um, think of things that are really which are very simple. They only take the value zero or one. Um, historically, maybe these first came up when um, tossing coins, they're either heads or tails, that's effectively zero or one. And uh, we've already pointed out many times that the histogram case is a, that type that um, x equals one is, um, can be that the um, a particular event is in a histogram and x equals Zero is that it is not. So one and zero. So if we have a probability mu, which of course is a coin tossing, is uh, 0 0.5 uh, for a decent coin, uh, that a particular event lies in the bin. And um, of course, we can generalize coin tossing that bias coins, which either preferentially become heads or tails. Then we have a random variable with two variables with probability mu that it's one, and one minus mu because probability always adds up to one to zero. And we can easily count the average value of x is mu, and the standard deviation is uh, <coughs> the average is the square root of the average value of x minus mu squared, and so the standard deviation squared is trivially calculated to be one minus mu into mu. Uh, for mu small, which has been the counting case we've been doing, one minus mu is one. Uh, standard deviation squared is mu, so sigma is square root of mu, which is the square root of the mean. Uh, but this is uh, the one minus mu of the mu is mu is a result true, whether or not uh, mu is small. So, so in our case, the chance of any one event lying in any one bin is negligible, so mu is small number, then one minus mu is, uh, is essentially one. And so we get our usual result that the uh, standard deviation is the square root of the average. So if we now do what we do with a histogram, which is the count the number of times we uh, uh, populate a particular bin, then we calculate the sum of the x's. And then this thing called O, which is then the number of uh, points in the, in the histogram, has a mean, which is n times mu, and a standard deviation, which is square root of n. That's because it's the sum of n events. And so we always know that we get a square root of n then when we add them up, times the standard deviation of x, which is square root of mu. So we get the um, fact that the uh, when we sum these binomial dis distributed events with small mu, that the, uh, the uh, uh, for the sum, we have uh, a mean, which is whatever we count it up to be, and the error is the square root of the mean. And that's why we have an error of five when we observe 25 events, or 250 events in the counting experiments we did. So, We have already, this is just a recap that um, error is the square root of the mean for counting time. This is really important. It's sort of trivial, but it's actually most important things are trivial. So this is underlies everything we do, say, and we, the binomial distribution is one for events in the bin and zero for the events outside the bin. And let's sort of come back and get back to physics again, because we've been doing too much mathematics. And just remind ourselves uh, how this uh, looks for the actual data that people take. So here's, a, you know, we've done all sorts of apparatus pictures. The last one I think was of Atlas. Here we have CMS. I pointed out the importance of the magnet. This is the magnet here, the solenoid, which bends the, the particles which are going off in this direction. Um, and here we have these calorimeters, which are the ones that uh, measure what happens when particles crash into them. And they have electromagnetic calorimeters, which are done very precisely. 
and had gone through and things which are not done so uh, precisely. And um, you detect muons because they hardly interact at all, and photons, which are critical. Remember, the Higgs goes to two photons, those are in those electromagnetic um, um, calorimeters. So, calorimeters measure energy, magnets bend, and Weakly interacting particles hardly do any interaction. So I'm putting all this together, and you find out uh, quite a lot about what goes on. Here's our famous uh, type of event we've seen many times. Bunches of charged particles bending. Here we are, here's a particle bending. And then array, then we have in the photon calorimeters, those green things. We see the two Protons are going off, they're going off transverse to the two protons, so they're very interesting protons. <coughs> this stuff that happens here is not so interesting. These are the fast particles. They're following the protons, they typically are not interesting. So, is this, uh, this is the type of thing that triggers design to select, and the analysis is which is meant to find the, the, um, the Higgs boson. Now there can be background, like you could produce, I don't know, two pi zeros, which two east pi zero itself that decays into two photons. <coughs> and so this pi, this photon here comes from one of the pi zeros, the other photon here comes from another pi zero. When the pi zeros went into photons, they did it selectively, so that one of the photons took most of the energy. So this could be actually a pretty rare event, two uh, high transverse momentum pi zeros, but um, not interesting. That's one of that. That's that sloping background on the original thing we studied. Um, so where are we doing here? This is the uh, four lepton final state, a different final state, and we have a signal here, which is uh, over the background here, and um, these are various background events. And this this uh, little red thing here is what happens when the Higgs mass is where it ought to be, well, it's where we now know it is, 126 GeV. And um, the uh, this has not really got enough statistics to be absolutely robust, but it confirms the measurement, because it shows an excessive events of the Higgs boson. And all this stuff here is background from various possible final states which have different colors. And remember, I, when I did phenomenology, I would try to generate these colors for you, which come from the model. Remember, we're making models. And we take the models, produce the what, see what they predict. It's, they're not too bad, they roughly agree with the experiment. They tend, probably they have the adjustable parameters, which are adjusted to have the right normalization. And that tells you whether, you're, whether you stand much chance of seeing the signal. And in this case here, there is actually a gap. If the Higgs boson had a different mass, it may be swamped by either this or this, which are not so interesting. I already pointed out signal over background. We've seen essentially this plot before. Here's the signal. And here's the background, this uh, green thing or dash thing. The dash thing here is the uh, background, and then there are the measure standard deviations from the background to show that this really is a very, very big signal. Um, so um, this is um, you use your physics intuition to select which of these plots to look at. And you do, your physics intuition is partly what the uh, theory predicts and partly what actually the data tells you. Both of those go into your physics intuition. So this single histogram probably came out of thousands or tens of thousands of other histograms that people looked at before they found this was the way to look at it, etc. This actually is a little interesting problem with the statistics of these events. Uh, you need to be careful to use the proper statistics and say that, well, what you see is not unique. And you didn't actually know where to look. So you're actually looking at other places. So where you see a signal in one out of a hundred, uh, 
plots is not as significant as if you only have one definite plot that you know you're meant to look at. So one of the important things you need to bear in mind in this type of analysis is to put in the fact that you're searching in an unbiased fashion because you don't actually know what the answer is, and therefore you're looking through lots of possibilities, and the probability of something, as, as everything is distributed Gaussian, so there's some probability of a pretty big swing, um, you have to put that into your analysis to say that there will be some, if you look at uh, 100,000 histograms, there are going to be some pretty wild things going on uh, in those histograms because the chance of something happening one in 100,000 times is, um, is uh, quite small. And so that you can see the tail of a Gaussian in some of those histograms. You need to be pretty careful. Um, <coughs> So, when you have a signal which is measured by a number of events and a background measured by a number of events, the statistical error is the square root of the sum of um, the signal plus the background. And you need this um, error here to be smaller than the signal. Or I should say, of course, as it says here, much smaller than the signal. And as you always, when well, they always have background, the, this is a much harder problem than making the square root of the signal smaller than the signal. So I don't know, probably 50 events, or let's say 49, the square root of the seven. That's pretty significant that there was no background. But if the background is bigger than the signal, you need, as we saw for the uh, um, CMS data, you need thousands of events in the signal to distinguish it from the background. And I also mentioned already systematic errors. Um, which are the errors in the plots, which come from the fact that you didn't measure things precisely, didn't interpret things quite right, and so you don't actually get a clean signal. There are errors, and those are either a model based uncertainties, or um, analysis, or an instrument based uncertainties, and they do not decrease like the square root of the total event sample. They can be fixed. Uh, uh, Completely fake, all sorts of things can happen with systematic errors. So you need to be a very good physicist to understand what's going on from the theory and the experiment to rule out systematic errors. <coughs>